Hey guys, it seemed like you really liked our SI Killer video where we took our 07 EX and made it into a screaming monster. Today I'm going to show you everything you need in order to do the swap yourself. You can do it! Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. We built what I consider uh, a no-brainer swap, and it was actually really fast. It was quite a bit faster than uh, a stock Civic Si. And basically, we took a high-mileage TSX motor and swapped it into our Civic and uh, wind up with a really fast car. Well, these cars are a dime a dozen, so I think this swap is gonna wind up being one of the more popular swaps in the near future. Uh, we picked this car up for 1300 bucks, and uh, although the interior was a little bit rough, if this was a track car, it would be the perfect vehicle for doing something like that. Putting a K24A2 inside this car actually isn't that hard. Once I pulled all the parts out, there's really not a whole lot to the swap. It seems to me to be a pretty easy, straightforward swap almost as easy as putting a B-Series in an EG or an EK. So let's go over everything we did in order to get this engine in that car. All right, first off, we started off with the TSX engine. You didn't have to start off with that. We could have used a uh, 06 Civic Si motor, the K20Z3. Uh, we could have used, uh, you're lucky, we actually had a Type R motor uh, from the FD2. Uh, wind up not being so good. but uh, those motors will fit in there. And you could honestly modify an Accord motor or an uh, RSX motor to go in as well. But uh, let me show you what we did with this TSX motor to get it to work. The first thing we did is we started off, we changed the intake manifold. I happen to have a 06 Civic Si intake manifold and throttle body. We bolted that on there. One of the reasons we wanted to do that was because once we put these on, there were really no modifications we had to do to our SI engine harness. Uh, we had a couple of those lying around. Uh, it was really easy just to kind of install it on there and everything was good. You notice one of the things we did do with this engine is we left on the power steering pump. Now, uh, the HN Civic uh, non-SI, it comes with hydraulic power steering. Uh, we didn't want to change over to electronic power steering. That was going to add a lot of wiring, going to need a new fuse box. So we decided just to uh, make a new power steering hose. Now. Another thing that has to be done with this engine is you do have to change the oil pan. If you come around to the back side of the motor, you'll notice that there's actually an engine uh, mount back here. You can see this bracket right here. That's where the rear bottom engine mount mounts to. That is only on the 06 SI uh, oil pan. So that means we had to change the oil pan. Now, if you're changing the oil pan, it's actually deeper. So that needs, means you need to change the oil pump as well. The problem is the oil pump that comes on the K24A2 isn't deep enough. Uh, so you need that deeper oil pump. You have two choices on that. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can take your 06 Civic Si oil pump. If you buy the oil pan, buy the oil pump with it. Uh, you need to cut some windows in the top of the oil pump housing. That's in order to clear the crankshaft as it comes around because the counterbalance shafts will contact the stock uh, SI uh, oil pump. Uh, what we decided to do though is we went ahead and got an FD2 oil pump from like an 08 Type R from Japan. Uh, that uh, required a few extra parts so we needed to get a new chain for like a K20. We also needed a tensure and a chain guide as well. But we installed all of those on this engine put the oil pan on, and then our engine was basically ready to go. Next, our transmission choice. 
We opted to use an 06 Civic SI transmission. The gear ratios are good, comes with the factory LSD, and this means we didn't have to mess around with the shift uh, linkage as well. We'd be able to use 06 Civic SI shift cables. So, uh, last is the intermediate shaft. The intermediate shaft is also from an 06 Civic, but it can actually come from an EP3, it can come from an RSX. Uh, as long as a manual transmission, uh, it can come from any one of those, uh, any one of those models, and that uh, intermediate shaft will work just fine. Okay, so um, that's pretty much everything here on the engine. We didn't have to change uh, the thermostat housing. Uh, this one on the TSX pokes up. It does on the 06 Civic SI as well. Um, the alternator, uh, we used the charge harness. It actually connected uh, everything. This is the 06 Civic charge harness. It connects to the knock sensor and the alternator just fine. Uh, so we didn't have to do anything you know, exotic for that. Uh, so that's basically everything we did in order to get the engine prepped in order to go in the car. So let's talk about some of the other things. First off, let's talk about the exhaust. Now the exhaust, this is a header for the 06 Civic SI and it's kind of necessary for that because it kind of extends out at a different angle than let's say an RSX one in order to extend over top of the subframe and reach back. Uh, we also had 06 Civic SI exhaust on it. We happen to have an old Magnaflow set uh, left over from uh, 2005 when we built a SEMA car. Uh, so we put that on there as well. Honestly, if I was going to be driving this car around on the street though, and I needed to add a catalytic converter, by the way, this connects up to the rear exhaust with no catalytic converter, I would have actually came in and sawed out this section of it and put a catalytic converter in there. I probably would have put a kind of a ball socket joint right here in order to take the flexing as the engine moves, but I would have replaced this with with a catalytic converter and that would have made it legal for the street. Um, next are the uh, radiator hoses. By the way, you're, you can use a stock radiator. It works just fine. Same as the SI radiator. Uh, all we had to do is buy SI upper and lower radiator hoses. Uh, those we bought from Honda. They were pretty reasonable. The other thing we needed was the heater hoses. So we went and purchased the uh, heater hoses from the SI as well. By the way, we were able to use all the spring clamps from everything uh, and uh, came with this little section as well. We had to purchase two more of those. Otherwise, we were able to use the stock ones completely. That brings up the fuel. This is the fuel line for the SI. I actually cobbled together something else from the um, uh, using some adapters and stuff like that. I don't suggest that. Just go out and spend 30 bucks and get the, the one for the SI. Oh my God. This steering. You're gonna need to do power steering. Kind of a beast. Kind of a beast. But it doesn't turn for shit. I mentioned before we wanted to use the stock power steering pump from the TSX. That means we need a new hose. On the R18, the power steering pump's on the back side of the motor. The TSX one's on the front side of the motor. And there's actually plenty of, plenty of room for it to be up front. Uh, I'm not sure why they put it on the back on the R18, but they do. Uh, but uh, this is the hose. So basically what we did is we took the stock hose and we cut this end off the stock hose. This end we got from a TSX and we then took just a section of hose and put it all on. We bolted it in the car and oriented everything correctly. And once we did that, we drew a line across our hose to make sure that it got oriented properly. Then I went down to the Parker store and had them make up a hydraulic hose for me. Uh, that was, uh, I think it cost around $50. Uh, and uh, that took care of our power steering hose for us and it works perfectly. The only other thing we had to do is we had to get some bulk hose to make a feed line. The feed line basically goes from the bottom of the reservoir over to the front of the pump and that's what feeds your power steering fluid to your power steering pump. We need to do that. Otherwise, the return line from the rack, we're able to use the stock one. Uh, there's actually a kind of a cool cutout on the Hasport mounts in order for the uh, tubing to be routed correctly, uh, but we we're able to leave all that in the car. Didn't have to change that at all. Next, we go to the transmission connections. Uh, first off, we started off with uh, the slave cylinder from the 06 Civic SI. Uh, these can be bought for about 120 bucks, or you can get them for significantly less if you buy them aftermarket. Uh, and then this little uh, Hard line, I think, was about seven or eight dollars. That also came from Honda. Now, what winds up happening is because my car was originally a manual transmission, there was a, uh, a master cylinder and a hard line that came all the way over to the frame rail just underneath the battery. And this uh, 
hooked up with a short piece of rubber hose that was there as well. And uh, that uh, allowed us to use the clutch uh, just like we would if uh, the car was stock. Um, another thing that was interesting, speaking of stock, are the axles. We were actually able to use stock R18 axles on the swap. This one's fine hooking up to the intermediate shaft on the K-Series. It winds up being just a smidgen short, but not so short that it caused a problem. We actually drove the car around a little bit and there was no issue with the axles whatsoever. So stock axles, you can use that. At one point we thought we were gonna use SI axles, but it turns out if you wanna use SI axles, you're gonna to have to change to SI knuckles because this hub is larger so you're going to have to take the SI knuckle and put that on the car as well. Luckily, uh, we figured that out, and, uh, and these happened to fit, so it was all good. Next is the shift cables. These are an o This is 06 Civic SI shift cables. They go right in the car. This matches up with the underside of the car perfectly. Uh, these brackets bolt into places that are already there, and the cables work actually with the stock shifter. This particular shifter is from the SI. It's got a shorter uh, rod on it, which actually acts like a short shifter. So uh, I went ahead, since I had one of these, just upgraded to that. But if you have a manual car, you don't even have to buy this part of the shifter. You can actually use the stock shifter. It works absolutely fine. Everything is the same with the exception of the length of this. It comes out another probably inch and a half, two inches, and uh, just has a slightly longer throw. Next is the intake. This is a stock intake. So one of the things about this engine is it has a MAF sensor. So that's this device right here. And the MAF sensor calibration is dependent on the size of the opening here. So you are gonna to want to use a stock intake air box or uh, maybe somebody's aftermarket intake that has a similar setup. Um, if you wind up with a larger intake air tube, that requires recalibration. It can be done, but uh, it's uh, just much easier. We actually found this one in the salvage yard. They're not super easy to find. I think uh, there's a couple companies that make aftermarket intake air tubes for this uh, vehicle, and uh, they should be sized properly to work with the stock MAF sensor. Uh, that brings us to the next point, which is the electronics. We did have uh, stock O2 sensors. So this is the air fuel ratio sensor. This is the secondary O2 sensor. At one point I thought I was gonna be driving this car on the street, so I got it, went ahead and got the secondary O2 sensor as well. Um, kind of changed my mind on that idea a little bit, but uh, if you're gonna make your street legal, you're gonna need that plus cat. Uh, another thing is uh, the ECU. ECU needs to be an 06 to 11 SI ECU. This particular one's an 06 ECU. I prefer that ECU because it doesn't have VSA integrated into it. So it's a little bit easier actually to race the car because it's not trying to control things uh, as much. So it, I, I feel it's a little bit better choice. This particular one uh, was from, again, uh, a car we had way back in 2005, we built for SEMA, and I've been using it in the CRZ. Uh, it works really well. Another thing I have to go along with that is the Honda Flash Pro. This actually allows for tuning. One of the things that's kind of cool about the Flash Pro is if you've got an aftermarket intake, you can actually disable the MAF and run just an intake air temp sensor. The other thing you can do, again, if it's a race car, is you can actually delete uh, the secondary O2 sensor as well. So uh, Honda Data Flash Pro if you're looking to tune the car. And I really do suggest doing this if you're going to be running a K24 because that allows you to take full advantage of uh, the capabilities of the K24 and you should be able to get maximum horsepower with it. And you can run it either as you would with an OBD2 legal uh, car with all the uh, things like secondary two sensor and, and uh, immobilizer and all that sort of stuff. You can run that and not mess with that and just, just tune the engine so you get maximum performance. Whether or not that's legal where you live, uh, that's up to you to check that out. When you do the swap, you're gonna need a Honda dealership to flash the uh, MICU and the ECU so that it works properly with this, uh, with this setup. And just use the stock keys and it's relatively painless, just takes a little bit of time. But the other thing is uh, on the wiring, we had to do a few little changes here. One of them was we had to extend the starter wire. Now the starter wire terminates at the shock tower on the R18 engines and it comes all the way down to where the battery is 
on the SI motor. So uh, we made this little uh, extender. Uh, I was able to get these connectors out of a salvage yard from an R18 car. Uh, I did crimp new terminals on, and the part numbers for those will be available on the website uh, at VTEC Academy. By the way, there will be a complete list of all these parts on vtechacademy.com. This way you don't have to write things down as, as you're watching this. Okay, one more item we have here. This is my adapter harness I made. Uh, basically, this adapts the car's C101 plug to the engine C101 plug. There are some changes, and all of those are contained here in this little adapter harness. The other thing it does is it breaks out the primary and secondary O2 sensors. Because on the SI model, these, this part of the wiring harness is actually in the car. On the R18, it's in the engine harness. So uh, these need to be broken out, and uh, this actually makes all the changes that need to go uh, so that the car communicates properly with the engine. And I'll tell you, everything works. TAC works, speedometer works, everything works. We now have our harness that we can plug in to our LXEX car and it will run our K20. There's actually a video we did on how to make this. Uh, the other thing is, is I'm sure somebody's going to be making these and selling them here pretty quickly. So you might just uh, noodle around on Google and see if you can't find somebody that's making these already. All right. Well, that's almost everything, except that brings us to my favorite part about the whole swap. And that's this right here. This is the mount kit that I engineered for the swap. First of all, when you use a K24, you need to change the block bracket. This particular block bracket, it works on the K20A, the K24A, and the K24Z. It will bolt on to all of those engines, and this gives you the right bolt, lo bolt locations for almost all the Hasport mount kits. So uh, this is a, uh, a must for a K24 motor. Uh, you can also use the CRV bracket or the element bracket. Uh, those will work as well, uh, but uh, I recommend this. Next are the mounts themselves. The rear mount. The rear mount is a little different than the R18 mount. It's a different dimensional length than the R18 mount, uh, and it's also a little bit different than the SI rear mount, but this mount is specifically designed for K-swap into R18. It's kind of short, it's kind of thin, and you're going to need that in order to use the stock subframe. Now, if you're changing, if you've got a wrecked car that you're taking everything from and you're doing the electronic power steering and all that sort of stuff, you can actually use the SI uh, subframe in your car, it'll bolt right in. Uh, that suspension is slightly beefier. Uh, you do need to make sure when you're ordering this mount kit that you let them know that you have an SI subframe because that's gonna change this rear mount. All right, for the driver's side, this is the mount that goes on the driver's side. This is a little brace that bolts on and ties in to uh, the shock tower. Uh, it has this little pass-through right here. This is actually for the return line on the, on the power steering. Uh, and then this side bolts up to a brace that goes to the uh, apron or the side of the, of the engine bay. That interfaces with this mount right here. There's also a uh, washer that goes on the back side, and that's where your ground attaches. So that is the passenger side mount. For the driver's side, we have a transmission bracket that goes on top of the K-series transmission. And then this mount bolts on top of the bracket on top of the transmission. And then this sits on the frame rail, and the mount mounts in there like that. So this is the transition, transmission side. Make sure you get this oriented right uh, so that the engine sits nice and flat and level. By the way, the reason it is able to flip is because I use this mount in some other swaps where the K-Series is dual height. It doesn't need to be dual height. In fact, it can't be dual height in the R18. The problem with doing it dual height in the R18 is the fact that if you set it at a low height, it would probably hit the subframe. Uh, so basically, uh, this sits in this position right here and bolts on the transmission like that. I hope this kind of explains everything we did in order to uh, get this engine in the car. 
Uh, I don't believe I missed anything, uh, but if you have questions, you think I might have missed something or maybe something specific to your swap, of course you can ask questions by emailing us at askvtechacademy at gmail.com and we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Otherwise, uh, you know somebody with an R18 powered Civic and uh, you think they need more power? Why don't you share this video with them? And uh, please think about liking and subscribing and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much.